Well, in 1988, at the GTE World Challenge Race in Tampa, Scientology sponsored a Porsche that had emblazoned on its side, larger than any other logo, a Dianetics decal. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of a cool decal, to be fair. Yeah. And driving the car was one of the most famous race car drivers of all time. Marty Jannetty. Mario Andretti. Yeah, Mar- dude. Marty Jannetti was a wrestler. Yes. yes. Mario <laughs> Andretti. Yeah, yeah. You were. I knew what you meant, and you I technically s- got it right. He's still Because you got it right in your mind. I did. <laughs> But the thing is, is that Mario Andretti didn't actually know that he was driving a Scientology car until he showed up. And he I... was driving a Yamaka. <laughs> <laughs> ah, damn. I am on fire today. So right. Every time yeah, everything's I speak, so Me right. Me too. Absolutely. Yeah. We, only, wow. we only ever crush it. Yeah. Now, Scientology figured that he wouldn't care one way or another, but they didn't count on the fact that Mario Andretti is an extremely devout Catholic. No way. An Italian race car driver is a Catholic? <laughs> I don't believe it. Someone who dies at work if he makes a mistake? He refused to drive the car because he sincerely believed that the Pope would excommunicate him if he drove a car advertising another religion. He might get excommunicated. I feel like so he I do love, But I do love about this is Catholics are like, Yo, you cute cult. You cute cult. <laughs> you, yeah. Tell guy. me you have a fucking Pope in a country. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So as a compromise, they removed the Dianetics logo and put it on a lesser car owned by the same racing company, uh, driven by a guy who could give less of a shit. Yeah, it was not Mario Andretti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was just like, yeah, I'll fucking drive it. I beat my wife every night. <laughs> oh. What do I give a shit? No, he wouldn't do that. Yeah. To replace the decal, they instead advertised Bridge Publications, which was the company that put out Dianetics. Okay. And in the end, Andretti finished six. His heart wasn't in it. Nope. No. Then Scientology continued sponsoring race cars for years <laughs> with less discerning drivers. Yes. Okay. The best was the the Indy cars that they had, because you know the Indy cars had the big uh, yeah, spoilers. spoilers on the back? Yeah. They just printed just the word Dianetics. Oh. <laughs> I just want one that's just, it should be all LRH themed. Mm. We have yeah. his face painted on the hood. <laughs> Make and it you fun. have his arms painted on the side. Oh, man. You know, you... and his butt painted on the back. <laughs> like it's him as a car. <laughs> no, but you no, you paint a van and you put that in the race. That's awesome. Yeah. That's fun. Also, I believe that's what your doctors told you to get on. A Dianetics. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah. Hey, it's a diuretic. Yeah. Oh, and I'm already feeling it. <laughs> Are you? I gotta pee. Now, Miss Cavage seemed to hold on to the fiction that L. Ron Hubbard would one day either be reincarnated or he would simply show up back on Earth at any time. And LRH did himself set somewhat of a timeline for this. I have a question, truly, and I don't know if it's answerable again, so just say no if you don't know. What do you mean? I was trying before to (laughs) equate things. Do you think David Miscavige believes that? Uh, Is he a true believer in that sense? Do you think he believes tangible in a tangible L. Ron Hubbard coming back? Do you know how some people are agnostic about God because they don't want to be wrong? Mm. Right, like idea. It's more about I don't want to be wrong. I don't want it. I've heard that argument so much. Yeah, Yeah, like what if what if there is a god and I show up and he's like, "Gotcha, bitch." I'm like, I don't know, right? Where like David Miscavige back door to seven three right here, Mister (laughs) Zabrowski. What was that? Oh God! But David Miscavige, I think, did all of this because he thought that it might happen because of all of the dudes that were close to it. Because like, yeah. I keep bringing it up because it was it was an interesting talk, but but Rinder talked about how there was probably at this point in time there's maybe been seventy five people that have directly been involved with LRH, right? That have actually been to the heart of Scientology okay. and touched it. And David Miscavige <laughs> is one of those guys. <laughs> but David Miscavige, like I think, was held under sway still of LRH in awe of him in yeah. a way, like yeah. and just more afraid. Well, I think it's a very convenient belief as well because he right. always has the fallback of like, well, this is what LRH is going to want. You yeah. Know, do you want it? Do you want LRH to come back and do you want him to see what a bad job you've done? Do you want to see his, No. Do you want him to see your goofs? No, I don't want to see my goofs. You want to see no. what kind of goofer you've grown no, yourself up to be? I'm not a goofer. <laughs> okay, so both convenience and then also if he doesn't believe that, maybe in his mind he's a total fraud. Hmm. But if he does believe it, I guess in his mind he's not a fraud. Well, I don't think he cares whether he's a fraud or not. I don't think he gives a oh, living okay. shit. Yeah. Okay. Well, from what Scientologists deciphered from Hubbard's rambling lectures, he was supposed to return to Earth 21 years after his death. But unless they've been keeping him in isolation with Shelley Miscavige since 2007, Oof. I don't think he's coming back. Well, he's not oh. up to snuff now. 
because he actually uh, he hasn't been doing the proper auditing. So yes, he is actually at the RPF right now, scrubbing the, the floors. L- LRH, LRH? Yeah, LRH. Yeah. yeah, he actually <laughs> didn't really cover it. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm really curious because the 21 year clock that he started, because that's what he once he went through all of his writings. Because mm-hmm. LRH, the t- remember he set up the Sea Org and it has the motto "We come back." Mm-hmm. Because what he says yeah. is that okay. I got you for a billion years. So but when you long. decide, yeah. I got you for you a long time. You signed a billion year contract. I know. We I got you, it. right? You're Sea Org. We got your butt, right? The thing is, so what he does is like, okay, you dropped your body. What do I do now? Guess what? You get 21 years off. Right. So as a ghost, you can go do whatever you want for 21 years. Yeah, you yeah. can go to Saturn. You can go to Venus. Wherever awesome. you want. You can go to, you can go, in, go into the side of the porter potty at a Bonnaroo festival. <laughs> right? like, oh, you, go, like, you can do whatever you want. But Yeah, why did that guy walk into the porter potty with a spork? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not disgusted. I use utensils. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to keep my, get my hands yeah, dirty. It's gross. Uh, but uh, LRH then says, so for after those 21 years, you're back at work. We got to get you back in, in step. So you got so, 21 years of reprieve and non Stop fun, almost like what they do with the Amish community. Yes, a rum yes, springer. Rum springer. Rum springer. You have a yeah. little rum springer, but then he. Uh, so now David Miscavige thought that that might actually be real, and so that began like in a twenty-one year like plan okay. of like what are we going to do? How are we getting this all in shape for when LRH shows back up? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, regardless, Miscavige used Hubbard's impending return for years as an excuse to keep his foot on the gas. As I said, a convenient belief. See, according to Hubbard, one of the biggest metrics for Scientology's success was book sales. So, under the guise of, this is what LRH's reincarnated form is going to want upon his return, Mm -hmm. Miscavige continued printing new editions of the Scientology backlog. Then he ordered all Scientologists to purchase every new edition, (laughs) like a college professor who uses his own book for his course. He learned that the way to make extra money within Scientology is to make me... Give you me back the money I've just given you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, by the early 90s, Scientology was starting to get a bad enough rap where the inevitable journalistic investigations began. It's unbelievable! <laughs> it's <laughs> fucking unbelievable! That's, that's more of a reach of spill, yeah, I think. <laughs> In 1991, Time Magazine published an article that detailed just how destructive Scientology had been to many people. Now, Scientology had been somewhat prepared for this, having already hired a PR firm named Hill and Knowlton in anticipation of the inevitable hit pieces. Mm -hmm. But the Time Magazine article was so damning that the PR firm dropped Scientology rather than defend them. Okay. Which is kind of hard because you're my crisis management team. Yeah. Right. I'm in a bit of a crisis. Mm -hmm. Didn't I pay you money to handle this and they were like mm, I almost think that's kind one. of fraudulent on the PR team to be honest because they were paid I would assume up to that point. Yeah, it was just so toxic. It just—it's a cult. Mm-hmm. So I right. think at some point you're like, mm. yeah, but what did they think they were gonna be? Uh, what did they think they were PR for? I think at first, well, at first maybe you think like maybe they're okay. They're just kind of people sign up for it. They volunteer to join Scientology. Well, but- you think they're kind of quirky? They're kind of cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, at this point, guys. nobody knows anything about Scientology. Yeah, like there's right. a, there's no huge exposés. You might get a couple of articles in like local papers, but there's no national es- exposés. Yeah. There's no national coverage at all. So you're thinking like, okay, uh, are you a religion kind of? And that's the other thing too is that I'm sure that whoever went in to talk to these PR people yeah. sold them an entirely oh, different yeah. version of what right. Scientology was. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, and even if he candled the call, because now you're looking at David Miscavige, who's like, we are simply a misunderstood religion, yeah. right? And we were up in the coming and people want to come for us because we have the truth and they're afraid we're going to shock and destabilize the entire world. Right. And then they go and they're like, okay. And then they get the, the Time Magazine article at the same time as everybody else does. And they're like, oh no, <laughs> what have we done? Yeah. Right. Now this article called Scientology, the thriving cult of greed and power it revealed that the church had netted $500 million Ooh. in 1987 alone. Wow. And those hundreds of millions were kept in secret accounts all over the world. This was also the first time anyone had publicly talked about the blackmail Scientology held over John Travolta concerning his sexual orientation. Poor man. I feel bad for I feel John really Tra. bad. I've, I mean, we went, we talked about it on page seven for many, many years. Yes. I'm very sympathetic for John Tra. Except oh, okay. for that he let the sun die, but... 
Well, I mean, that's, that's a whole. Thing. That's a whole it's thing. A whole that's a whole thing. thing. You know, that's but that's his, and that's his right as a father. <laughs> <laughs> it also speaks very much to his intelligence and his naivete. Yes. Yeah. But not coincidentally, and very sadly, John Travolta, after this article came out, he announced his engagement to Kelly Preston oh. like two weeks later. Oh, oh, we just went that road. Yeah, he went that road. Yeah, but Kelly seemed lovely, and if you're going to be, she was hot and stuff. Well, he, does, yeah, but that doesn't a, matter to him. Well, he does he, have a he wife. He could work it out. He got it in there enough. I, I just read that he had his wife. You don't know that. Do you think it was you, all? I've seen it. I've seen, it. I've seen him do it. Yeah. Because the thing is now, like, because you could do the thing where you just come on a chair and she sits in it. No, you can't do that. That's a do Bill Hicks joke about weak sperm. Is it true? Yeah, it's kind of funny. It's, he says you, you look like your weak sperm. Looks like your dad came on a seat and your mom sat on it. Yeah. Wow, it's all been done. Best best part of your best part of you slid down, down the crack your, mom your mama's, mama's ass. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> mm. 